to another tutorial by Harla Penguin. I'm your host, Norm. Today, we are going to add some open shading language speckles to a sphere. In our previous video, we talked about some of the advantages of open shading language. One of those advantages is the ability to create great procedural textures, such as this speckled paint texture. It only takes a few lines of OSL code to create a shader with the ability to easily customize. As always, the full text of this shader is available at harlapengrin.com. Let's get started. So first we will set up our scene. I will delete the default cube, add a UV sphere, smooth, scale it up, and let's split our screen. We will create a text editor on this one with a new text document, and we will call this speckle.osl. And we will create the, the basic outline of our shader. So shader, spatter. And I will add a few parameters to this. First, a float KD. And KD will define our diffuse weight. Zero gives no weight to the diffuse color, meaning only specular, while one gives only weight to the diffuse. I will add a float KS, which is the specular, and I will also make that as 0 0.5. Now generally, you will want the KD and KS together to equal one. And in this case, let me fix that, so 0 0.5. And the reason for this is it, something we call conservation of energy, meaning the total amount of light that's reflected by an object should be equal to the amount of light, or at least can't be more than the amount of light that hits the object. So in this case, we want both the diffuse and the specular to carry half the weight. We will add a float roughness equal to 0 0.2. Roughness just describes the roughness of the surface, and this impacts whether the, the specular highlights are, are sharp or diffuse. We will add a float spec size equal to 0 0.01. Int integer sizes equal to 5. Now these two parameters we will use to, to really determine how big our spec sizes are and how many there are. We will add a color, specular color, which will set the, the specular color, the highlight color, and in this case we will just make it white. We will add a base color. We'll make this equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, which means it's sort of a, a bluish color. We will add a color spatter color. So whatever color we want the, the paint spatters or, or the speckles to be. And in this case, we will simply have white. And then we will have our output closure color and set that for now to just diffuse with our normal as the input. All right, and add our brackets. Now we will use a, a few other variables. We will use a threshold, which we will, will be used throughout the, the algorithm to determine when to when do we actually have a speckle versus when do we use the base color? We will have color paint, which we will set initially to our base color. We will have a specular amount.
and this is this is a variable that we will use to determine whether how much specular we have and we'll give more specular for for the paint spatters versus less for for the diffuse and we will have a variable that we call our scale factor which is equal to 1 over the spec size All right, so the way that this shader operates is by creating several different sizes of noise. So the shader takes the, the current position using a, a global variable called P that describes the point we are shading. It transforms that from object space to shader space and then multiplies that by, it, by our scaling factor. Uh, and then it does, this, it does this iteratively to create different sizes of, of speckle. So to do this, we will use a loop for the current size, which is one size, we'll start with one, is less than or equal to our sizes parameter, and then size plus equals one for each iteration. And by, by creating this loop, what we can do is we can create even more sizes by increasing the number of sizes, or if we want fewer sizes, maybe Maybe we just want one size of speckle. We would set this just to one. So now for each iteration, we want to create a speckle. And again, to do this, we will use the noise function that is built into OpenShading language. We will transform into the shader space our current position. And we will multiply that times our scale factor variable so this one right here and as as we change the spec size then it changes it changes the noise so then we will check and if our speckle is greater than our threshold which is the value that we set right here then that means that we should consider this point to be a paint speckle or, or paint spatter. So we will change the paint, which was the base color. We will change it to our spatter color. So this parameter right here. We will then also change the specular amount at this particular point. We will change it from the 0 0.01, which you could consider our base specular, and we will change it to what we have here, the 0 0.5 for the KS. And just to emphasize this, I'm going to violate our, our rules of conservation, and I'm, I'm actually going to increase that to 0 0.7, just to make those those spots a little, a little shinier. And let me fix my, my spelling mistake. And then once we have a paint spatter here, there's no need for us to continue working on this loop. So we will, we will break the loop. If we do not break the loop, then before the next iteration, we will actually divide our scale factor by two. And then as a, a final step, we will assign everything to the paint closure. So we start, we start with our diffuse and we will take our paint and we will multiply it times KD and then multiply that times our diffuse normal as a parameter. We will add a specular color times our specular amount, which will either be equal to KS or equal to 0 0.01, depending if it's, if it's paint or no paint. And then we will multiply that times an, another function for OSL called microfacet GGX, 
which just takes the normal as well as our amount of roughness. And that's everything that we need for, for this shader. So let's go ahead and we will split this area. We will go to our node editor. And for this particular node, we will create a new node. Oh, and I see nothing changed here. And that's because I need to change to cycles render. And I need to make sure I enable open shading language. So I will delete the default. I will add a script, click here. And good news is it looks like everything compiled properly. And I connect that to the surface and then let's see, let's see what this looks like. So as you can see, we get the speckled texture. And as we rotate around, we can see that the light shines on it and the light actually reflects more on our paint spatters than it does on our, on our diffuse material, which is exactly what we want. So that's all, that's all it took to create this very, very nice texture, just these simple lines of code. And as you can see, we can play, we can play with the spec sizes. So if we want, if we want these really big specs, then we just increase the sizes. If we don't, if we want the, just the really small ones, maybe tiny ones, we'd have sizes of, of one. We can also change our spec sizes by, by changing this. So here we have huge ones or back to our, back to our tiny little ones. We can impact the roughness, which as you see, if I increase the roughness to one, then it means we have very little, very little reflection on this versus if we take it all the way down, then we have high level of reflection. And then again, we can change how much, how much reflection we have. Leave it at 0.7. So that's everything. If you have any questions, feel free to, to leave a comment, or if there are any other tutorials you would like to see, please let us know. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.